G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about costochondritis. Uh, more specifically, I want to talk from my experience as a physiotherapist about the hidden, often missed underlying cause of costochondritis. And it's something that I think if you come to this video struggling to resolve that sort of chest wall um, rib pain, um, I think it's a really important thing that you have to consider uh, to make sure that you've ticked off in your sort of quest to feel a lot better. Um, the second thing that I want to go through towards the end of the video is I want to show you a really, really effective um, exercise to get at that hidden cause, to hopefully take out that main handbrake that might be stopping you from feeling better quickly. So again, I want to talk based on my experiences. These are things that I've found clinically and things that I think everyone needs to know um, because in all seriousness, they're very, very simple, very, very basic things to think of to hopefully help you fix that costochondritis. So, so for anyone who's watching this video who isn't aware of what it is, basically, costochondritis is essentially an irritation or an inflammation of the, the rib joints at the front of the chest wall. And unfortunately for a lot of people, um, many people are left with a diagnosis of that rib joint pain, that costochondritis, um, after they've had some chest pain, uh, freaked out, go on to get it checked out for a heart attack, make sure the heart's okay. And then afterwards, once that's been ruled out and all the stress has passed, um, you're given that label, given that diagnosis of like an irritated inflamed rib joint. Um, and it's not to be taken lightly because again, if you're watching this video and you have costochondritis, you'll know that it can be really, really painful and sometimes unrelenting um, for a number of reasons. One of which is every breath we take, uh, particularly a deeper breath, we have the potential to irritate or um, stir up that pain even further. So I think the information in this video will hopefully be very, very helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments below if you do find this helpful. I genuinely want to know. I want to make sure that the information that I'm finding clinically, the things that I find work clinically, are also having an effect on you guys as well. So, um, so as we get into this, I think the really important thing to understand here, and again, that costochondritis type pain can be a lot lower than what a lot of people realize. So obviously the rib cage extends below the sternum. Um, we have these sort of um, cartilaginous ribs, rib joints, um, that basically uh, come down lower. And they're obviously below the rib joints that sort of form the traditional rib cage that we all tend to think about when we've got the sternum and that chest plate, essentially. So, so basically you've got your rib that attaches into the sternum at the top here. Any number of those joints can become irritated or sore. But then when we get lower than the sternum, we have basically the rib joint that attaches into some cartilage um, a little bit lower than that. And again, all of those can become sore potentially as well. So if you have any of that pain in that sort of line or arc along the inside of that rib cage, um, then potentially this could be what you're dealing with. And importantly, what's really important to understand about this, and this is what I think is missed a lot clinically, is that we need to think of these joints, these irritated areas, as the last straw. They're a consequence of something else not functioning normally, and that's just the part of your body that's freaking out or uh, can no longer tolerate that dysfunction. So whether you have your costochondritis from a, an acute accident or an acute injury, say you do something, you suddenly get that pain and it hasn't gone away, or you're someone who's gradually sort of recruited those symptoms without, without realizing it, or they've come on insidiously without you knowing, if you've ended up with some rib pain in this area, or some rib joint pain, I should say, um, then this next um, part of the video is really important to master because what a lot of people don't realize about costochondritis and, and costochondral problems is that they're often a consequence of what's going on behind you. So the foundation of that rib cage is if you have your thoracic spine down the middle, the ribs at the back attach into those areas and then wrap around and insert at the front. Now, what we often see with a lot of people with this condition is that the joints associated with um, the irritated area are often heavily stiff, tight, um, you know, there's a lot of muscular tightness around that, maybe some muscle spasm, but there's some undertones of joint stiffness in those areas. For example, if you have, for example, um, say sort of nipple level, say your, um, that rib joint has become irritated, What's important to realize is the rib cage isn't essentially a, a straight barrel where if you go all the way around towards the back, you won't necessarily hit the related rib joint at the back um, that correlates to the front. In actual fact, you have to go up a little bit higher to get there. So if you've got a rib joint here that's irritated, it's very likely that if we look at you around the back, that it's going to be a little bit higher up in that section. So 
when we get to this exercise in a second, and all it is is basically using a ball, um, we want to make sure that you're going around and up when you get back to that sort of central part of that thoracic spine so that you're not missing where the actual stiffness and tightness is. And to be fair, when you go exploring with the ball, um, you'll pretty quickly see and understand where your main aspects are, but there is a little nuance to that that we need to talk about in a second so that you're getting to the cause of that dysfunction. Um, and again, we'll get to that in a second, so hold on for that. But the thing that I wanted to talk about here is that uh, based on a lot of the positions and the postures and the shapes that we gravitate towards day to day, and again, if you've been following this channel for a while now, you know we talk about this a lot, and it applies really, really um, closely to costochondritis. So, so basically, if you know where your irritated rib joint is at the front, and you trace that around and back up into the higher part of your back, maybe a little bit higher into your upper back, there has to be a reason why that specific part of your back has become problematic. And what we see for a lot of people is it often relates to the positions and the postures that we get into and where we force that excess load to go over time. So if you're someone who has this condition and you sit at a computer a lot, if you watch a lot of TV, if you have to drive a lot of distances, um, you know, if you play an instrument, if you, you, know, if you play guitar, you're stuck in a posture, um, you do arts and crafts, even if you just sit up in bed and read a book or use your phone, the quality of your postures really, really counts when trying to fix this problem because it often has a role to set you up for this problem in the first place. So again, if you have an acute um, onset where you do something and bang, you get that chest pain and it hasn't left, it may sound strange that we're equating uh, you know, imperfect postural habits to an acute issue, but what we find is, or at least what I find clinically, is that the postures and the shapes that we get into set our tissue, set our tissue up to fail over time and take away that buffer to tolerate uh, imperfect scenarios. So say if you coughed and sneezed and that was the onset of your, um, you know, your rib pain, then we know coughing and sneezing is normal. So that alone shouldn't be the underlying cause unless it's picking on something that's already dysfunctional. And again, if you cough and sneeze or you move a certain way and a specific part of your chest becomes sore, there has to be a reason why that specific exact point becomes sore and not everything or something else. And again, when we sort of look back into your history and observe the positions and the shapes that you get into, there's often a direct correlation between sort of the where you load up your spine and what becomes vulnerable and where it becomes sore over time. So I can't harp on this enough. We need to make sure that you're conscious of those positions because if we go about freeing up the tissue at the back to relieve all the stress at the front, then it's going to keep stiffening again. It's going to, uh, to keep becoming overloaded um, if we're not sort of taking it out of that position and giving it a break. So as I said, I wanted to make that really clear because it, sometimes it sounds a bit strange that poor postural habits or imperfect postural habits over time can set off this chain reaction of events that set this tissue up at the front to fail. But clinically, we know that by going back the other way, by assessing where the rib joint pain is, following it around to the back and then seeing where you load that up and how you load that up, there's a direct um, correlation, as I said, that links those things together. And once we start to remove those handbrakes, this pain starts to resolve. So obviously, if you're someone who's had costochondritis now for a number of months, even a number of years, unfortunately, we, we definitely want to see change with this exercise straight away. We want to see enough improvement that you feel very confident that you're doing something that's connected and something that's going to help. But to truly resolve those symptoms, we need to make sure that those postural habits have been pretty good for a while so that that tissue has a chance to normalize and all the irritation can go away over time. So we need to see constant progress, but the finality of you fixing this issue might take a little bit longer. But ultimately, I think for a lot of people who have been struggling with it long term, have chronic costochondritis, even just seeing that gradual change can be enough to feel like you're on the right track. Um, and to take away a lot of those stresses and frustrations. So, so again, um, without delaying this any further, um, if you guys can grab a tennis ball, this is a lacrosse ball, um, nothing fancy. You don't have to have a, you know, a, one of those hyper vaults or anything that's um, expensive. Just grab a ball and one that is soft enough that you feel very comfortable pressing into the, sort of the joints of your upper back. And that comfort isn't necessarily based on how fragile the spine is because it's not, it's very robust but more so if it's very tender back there, a softer ball will feel nicer and will achieve more results than a harder ball in that instance. If we get back there and you find that it's just really stiff and tight, 
with a little bit of tenderness sort of sprinkled over the top, then by all means use a ball that's a bit harder because you'll get faster results um, and hopefully see some change through here. So, so with this exercise, basically what we want to get you to do, as I said, if you know where your pain is very specifically, if it's down low, then obviously as we come up, it might be sort of at the base of your shoulder blade. If it's sort of more where it's sort of nipple level and above, we're looking higher up into that upper back. So anywhere from the base of your neck down to essentially the base of your rib cage, any of those joints can be connected to the one, um, can be theoretically a joint that gives you pain somewhere along that level. So we want to find out where that is. So what we want to get you to do basically is place the ball just in the middle of your upper back on the spine, let it roll just off to the left a little bit. So you're rolling off the, um, the thoracic spinal joints onto those costovertebral joints, those rib joints as they attach into the spine. And again, you'll know where it is because if it's interesting, you'll find something valuable. So I'm gonna place the ball all the way up there, sort of mid, mid shoulder blade for me. Uh, and again, apologies, this door wobbles a little bit. <clears throat> so ideally you'll do this on the floor. You can have a lot more impact on the floor because you can gently use your body weights. <clears throat> excuse me, you can relax, you can get more pressure onto it. But <clears throat> for the purposes of this video, I'll do it sitting up against the wall. So all we wanna get you to do is start in the middle of the spine, just let it roll off to the side a little bit. So the important thing here is that if you have left-sided costovertebral pain or costochondral pain um, or rib joint pain, it doesn't always mean that the stiffness is going to be on the left-hand side of your upper back. Now, we, don't, we want to take all the guesswork out of this. We want to base it on how you feel. So we certainly want to respect where it feels tender. So if I'm moving it gently up and down and I find a spot for me that feels a little bit tender, it also has to feel very stiff, tight and restricted for me to dig the ball into it. And to get a sense of what that feels like or how that compares, if you let the ball roll over to the opposite side, the same spot on the opposite side without losing it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so again, I'm on the left-hand side, I'm just rolling across to the right-hand side here. And I wanna get a sense of which side feels to me like the ball sinks in better. So for about 50% of people, 60% of people, it is actually the same side that's stiff as to where the pain is at the front. But just make sure that you're not one of those um, other people that the actual stiffness is on the opposite side, which can sound confusing, but your body doesn't really care as much about left and rights. If I'm stiff and tight on this side, I still pull a lot of slack and can create dysfunction anywhere around that area. So it's more so the level that's important, not necessarily the side. So if we can unglue that stiffness, we can relieve a lot of the tension and the dysfunction that equates around the front. So, so for me, my right side doesn't feel as tight. It probably feels a little bit tender, but the left-hand side for me doesn't feel like it sinks in as well. It feels a bit stiffer and tighter. So all I want to do here is once I've found that spot, I'm not rolling around trying to sort of pancake and massage those tissues free. I'm literally letting the ball press into that specific spot for about a minute or two. I can take some deep breaths to try and get those ribs to, uh, to expand, get those joints to shear free, provided it doesn't irritate you at the front. If it does, then don't take the deep breaths, obviously, but we want to find a spot that feels a bit stiff, stay there until it feels less stiff, and then move the ball up a little bit or down a little bit or a little bit further out onto the rib until I find the next spot. And this is essentially all it is. So, and what you might find, and um, there's a positive and a negative to this, is that if you hit the spot um, that's related, you may find, even if it's up here at the back and it wraps around to the front down here, you may hit a spot that reproduces or generates your rib pain at the front. Now, obviously that can feel uncomfortable, but the really positive thing about that is if you can do that, you've just found a level in your back that connects and correlates to that pain. And there's every chance, and it's almost a guarantee without obviously being able to guarantee anything, but it's highly likely that that section that you've just found is really stiff, really tight. It may or may not be tender, but it's that stiffness and that tightness that we care about because that's potentially the, the handbrake on the system that's forced this to become dysfunctional and irritated when it did. So we need to make sure we free that up, we move up a little bit, see if there's anything else there, free that up, move down a little bit, free that up as well, move out to the side, free that up as well. Double check that the other side isn't more stiff, then also free up anything that's necessary on that side or that segment, and then we can reassess how you feel. So for a lot of people, just taking a deep breath is a good test and a retest before and afterwards. It could be something is twisting, it could be arching backwards, it could be whatever it might be. It could be a pec stretch. Whatever gives you that sort of sense of your pain, do that first, 
take note of how it feels, how sore it feels and where you feel it. Do this ball exercise, spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour exploring every sort of aspect around that that feels relevant, then retest it again. And that way you don't have to trust me, you don't have to believe me. You'll just hopefully see the impact that a ball can have on your rib cage at the back and then flow through to the rib cage at the front. So it's a really, really powerful exercise because if someone came in to see me clinically, um, I would spend a lot of my time trying to mobilize those stiff joints at the back. And a ball is a really great way to mimic what I would do in terms of trying to free up those joints, uh, as I said, in the clinic. So, so please give that a go. Let me know in the comments below, A, how it feels, because it may be tender, and B, how you go with it. Um, it's something that I find highly effective clinically, um, and I hope that you guys have the same experience. So, um, and before I finish off on the video, I think the, the one thing just to, um, to sort of bring into the mix is a lot of the specific um, costochondral treatments that we give out and that you guys will be doing uh, to the front are still really important. So some people might need some of the, if there's some muscle spasm around that joint, you might need some really fiddly muscle spasm, uh, sorry, muscle massage at the front of that chest wall or wherever it might be just to try and help unglue some of the consequences of becoming irritated and inflamed there. So I don't want it to sound like just doing this on its own will fix it. It may, but for a lot of people, you still need to address the local dysfunction clearly. So again, I don't want this to sound like it's this or nothing and that everyone's wrong, but more so that this has to be a fundamental piece of the puzzle for you guys going forwards, as well as the postural awareness and the postural appreciation if you're trying to cover all the bases that cause this stuff to happen a lot clinically. So um, again, whether it's stretching, massage, uh, you know, strengthening the, the back muscles, all the stuff that we tend to talk about is still uh, important and play an important role. But like I said, I wanna give you guys a slightly different perspective. I wanna take a step back and say, this is the, the things that I'm finding clinically that set you up to have these problems in the first place. Whether it's an acute onset or whether it's a gradual onset, when you know what caused it or when you don't know what caused it, please check this out yourself just in case it's there for you. Um, and I think at least in a lot of the cases that I see clinically, I haven't seen anyone in probably 10 to 15 years now that doesn't have some related stiffness in the back um, that needs to be reduced and freed up in order to alleviate those symptoms. So um, I really hope that it's the missing piece of that puzzle that you guys have been looking for. Um, again, if it is, let me know down below. Um, and as always, if you do enjoy this video, if you find it useful, please consider sharing it to someone else who may have the same issues. Um, and then let me know with a like rating down below. And obviously you subscribe to the channel if you can. Um, obviously I wanna grow this and reach as many people as possible. And I can't do that without your help. So, um, so I would appreciate that if you could. But um, on that note, um, hopefully that helps. Best of luck with it. I know it's not a, a fun thing to have. And then hopefully I'll see you in the next video as well.